stuff is by saying it isn't autobiographical. It's called tattoos. In the 60s, it was CND. Badge of Belong, Them and Us. She saw the solemn pie chart, a child's toy rocket, as an anxious face, brows drawn down in stern warning. She etched it on her shoulder and marched at Green Greener. In the 70s, she fell in love, and love stretched across her chest. No name for that would change year to year. But the symbol remained clear, I am one who loves passionately. Its counterpart, the jagged tear, tear and tears of blood below, came later. When she got religion, the crucifix hammered on the surface of her body's temple, invaded with its arms, her own skin. Her blood ran from the nails upon her feet. Hair shaven, she accommodated the Godhead's suffering, the crown of thorns and so encircling both their brows. She had no room for more. As this is called meeting at night, death entered her room. It was late at night, all the doors were locked, windows shut. The clock was playing tic-tac-toe with the hours and seconds. Death sat and read her last diary entry, her old love letters, the poems she'd written once when she was 13, and then never again. He thought the poems held promise, but they languished forgotten in an old shoebox full of nothing but broken, useless things that nevertheless could not be thrown out, thrown away. Death leafed through her photo album, remarking how much she looked like herself, aged three and eighty-three. It was the gaze, the fierceness of the eyes. In the morning, death left. It was as if he had never been there. Everything was exactly the same as when he came. Death now at home, reading the obituaries, her soul, timid and shy, sat beside him as he sipped 